Welcome to Love ADHD, everybody. This is episode 11, and we are so excited because we have a special guest here today. And she stands at five two, <laughs> maybe. Is five five two, three, right? Julie. Come how on. You. <laughs> wow. How dare I? Excuse me. Five three, a towering five three, and she's yeah. the best hair doer in all the land. I love title. her. <laughs> And she also is half DNA of Tony Overbay, so that makes her very fun. Her name is Mackie Overbay. Welcome to the podcast, Mackie. Thank you, Julie. I'm so excited. I'm going to throw up balloons for you, Mackie. Hang on. <laughs> Give it a second. There we go. <laughs> We're for reals now. And welcome, as always, to my lovely co-host and Mackie's father, Tony Overbay, who is now 54 years old. Thank Happy you. Birthday. I are you to say young. Isn't that what you 54 say? Fifty four years young. Fifty four <laughs> years young. I think that's what you say to old people. Thank you. I'm Julie. sorry. Did you want to introduce this episode? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that is called passive aggressive, Mackie. That's what I was talking about earlier. Learning so much. Exactly. The passive right. aggression is our favorite. Okay, just kidding. Yes, but for reals, happy birthday, Tony and Mackie. Very we're fun. so excited to have you. So today I'm very excited because I say that every episode, but I really do mean it today. And I meant it all those other times too. <laughs> We're talking about anxiety versus ADHD because as I've learned in my own research and as I kind of started to discover my own diagnosis and then being diagnosed, I realized that the majority of my adult life when I would try to tackle my mental health issue, I saw as anxiety. It was always anxiety that then if kind of going unchecked for long enough would spiral into depression, but it was always started with anxiety. And for that reason, I never even thought about ADHD. And I found it interesting as I was doing some reading that especially in adult women, they are often misdiagnosed with anxiety, depression, when really the root of it is ADHD. But it looks different often than the kid bouncing off the walls in the classroom, right? Like which we've referred to that stereotype. So I'm excited today to compare and contrast the the differences between ADHD and anxiety because there is a reason it gets misdiagnosed. There is there's some similarities there, so it's understandable. So thanks. This was Tony's idea to tackle this topic, and I'm pumped. Thank you, Julie, and uh, the reason and thanks for Mackie for coming on here because I still remember reading the book Driven to Distraction. And do you remember we were literally on a walk? I don't know if you remember this, and I was talking about symptoms of ADHD, and I feel like you were identifying with some of them, but in my mind, I was thinking, no, I have ADHD. You have anxiety. I was starting to kind of panic and go, I think maybe I have this. I'm I'm playing the role of anxiety. Yeah, so Mackie will be playing the role of anxiety today, (laughs) but yeah. Is she going to do an anxiety love note at the end? Oh, might be putting her on the spot, but that might be a thing. (laughs) Which she loves. Right? (laughs) Or she loves, which is part of anxiety. I don't know about that. (laughs) And by the way, very quick plug for, and we talked about you today, Julie, we recorded an episode of Mackie and I do a podcast called The Mind, The Mirror, and Me, and we talked about you today, and we said nice things. Really? Yeah, we did. That's Um, nice. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, (laughs) so we want people to go listen to that as well. We did, that's a really fun one to do. I think we we talked about boundaries last week, and today we talked about friends, didn't we? Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Wait, so- Someone's my friend that I'm talking to right now. I don't know if it's Tony or Mackie, but one of you said I'm your friend. Oh, yes. We both did, which, I think. Yeah. Which number of episode is it so I can look? Oh, <laughs> we forgot. Don't worry about it, Julie. Oh, you didn't really <laughs> no, Don't go listen. <laughs> no, I think it's, uh, it's 15, 14, 15, 15. 15. It'll be 15. Yeah. And we may have talked about how you pet your hair as well. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, but you know. <laughs> yeah, in the context of being a friend. In a I'm nice, gonna... friendly way. Okay, I'm just going to tuck it away for a day when I'm like, I don't have any friends. I'll know to go listen to that episode and I'll be like, that person said I was a friend, you know? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. By the way, we need to go back in and re-record. Add in a little bit. This doesn't make me feel good. (laughs) And that is rejection system dysphoria, which we covered earlier on Love ADHD. Mm. Okay. All right. And this, I think this kind of goes to what you're talking about too, is that when you're trying to figure out if it's anxiety or ADHD that anxiety typically ties back to specific thoughts or situations. Um, so maybe you feel overly anxious or about certain scenarios or thinking about certain things, then in a kind of the general view is that that's probably anxiety. And ADHD, it's more about how your brain is wired. And so the signs are kind of there all the time. So if somebody just hypothetically is always feeling a little bit scattered, can't sit still, no matter what the situation, it's been going on for a long time, like just hypothetically 54 years, then you're probably looking more at ADHD. 
Uh, and so, but then there are situations where somebody can have both ADHD and anxiety. And it's important to note that it's usually better to try to rule out or tackle the ADHD first. And, you know, I found an example that said that it's like when you're trying to listen to music, but there's a noisy fan in the room that you have to turn off the fan, which would be the ADHD. And then suddenly it's a lot easier to hear the music, which would be the anxiety. So once you get a handle on the ADHD symptoms, then it's a lot clearer to see how much of the behavior is actually due to anxiety and not just ADHD kind of doing the ADHD thing. So I, I have a scenario that I would like both of your opinions on. And what I like, I was telling Mackie that there really isn't a wrong or a right answer because one of the things I think we've gotten a lot of feedback, good feedback, Julie, is that it doesn't always show up exactly the way a checklist says. So in, in this scenario, if you, so preparing for a big test, if you can think back to your last test that you had to take for some reason, that somebody struggling with anxiety. So I guess I'll be looking at you playing the role of anxiety <laughs> today, right? That would be me. Um, so typically the person will spend, I don't know, days, weeks waiting or worried about the test. So then they constantly think about failing or not being prepared enough. And then even when studying, then they're just continually worried. If I'm, am I not studying the right things? Am I not studying enough? Should I have been studying more? I wonder what, uh, are other people studying more? Or, you know, and then that, first of all, does that resonate at all? Yeah. I'm okay. thinking back to the last test I took was to get my cosmetology license. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I spent every waking second of my life, like, just taking other quizzes and tests to learn or to, like, practice test for it. And then even I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, like, yeah. eat. I couldn't, like, anything. Everything was just test, 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 test. Okay. Was, and yeah. then I'm going to tell the, the ADHD one. And then, Julie, I want you to tell because the ADHD one fits me perfectly. And then I want to see where you fit in, Okay. Okay. So then, so for somebody that has ADHD, that person intends to study, but they keep getting distracted and they might start one topic and then jump to another and maybe get sidetracked by an unrelated task. And then the night before the test, then they might realize that they really haven't studied as much as they intended. And then they try to cram harder, but then that's sometimes where then that dopamine dump of procrastination comes in and then they will find themselves, okay, I crammed. And then often they do well and they pass and this is one of those things where I started to realize, and I still remember this moment, I was in the computer industry before I was doing what I'm doing now. And I remember talking to this one programmer that we had, and he was talking about uh, some Super Bowl that happened in the 80s. And he was telling me who won it. And I loved football at the time. And I remember asking him, how do you know that that's who won in the 80s? And he said, well, because I read it. And I thought, can I read things all the time? I don't remember them. I, I didn't know that those things went together. I thought that <laughs> you can read things and cram for things and remember them, and then you forget them. And so I just thought it was so interesting though, that that ADHD vibe, so often you do what you have to do to get through the thing and pass the test or whether it's my licensing exams or boards or whatever it is. And then it's like, whew, that's averted, that's over. And now I'm better. So I don't have that and crippling anxiety leading up. I just know that I'll do it later. I'll do it later, I'll do it later. And then I finally do it and then I make it through. So where do you fit in, Julie? I'm a lot more like you than Maggie. <laughs> yeah, I like... I always intend to do it, and then I cram at the end. Sometimes it doesn't go good. Yeah, but a lot sure. of the time, but it's pretty much always passable. Uh, it's good enough. <laughs> yes, it works. <laughs> and I do feel leading up to it, I do tend to feel anxiety about the fact that I haven't yeah. done anything yet, but I don't fix it by studying. Then, right. And then thinking that that's almost the way that it just works and then finding out that other people have been worried about it for a long time. And then when and I tell them, well, don't too. worry about it. Yeah. They're like, like studying and they're worried. And I'm like, oh. So that's what I do. Yeah, that's what you do, right? <laughs> All the feelings. Yeah. yeah. And I think what's fascinating, and I'm just saying this one out loud, but they're, uh, you know, over in my work with uh, emotional immaturity on the Waking Up to Narcissism podcast, there is a pretty heavy comorbidity or correlation with emotional immaturity and ADHD. And this is the part where I can see that then having to be able to, to self-confront or admit that, oh, I didn't prepare as well. Because if I get to that point where then I didn't prepare and then I have to cram and then it doesn't go well, it's a lot easier to say it's not my fault. That test was too hard. Or they didn't give me all the information I needed or I didn't get a good night's rest or all these things instead of saying, oh, I didn't study. And that's where I really like trying to help people take accountability or ownership. And, and I think that's where that immaturity comes into play. Because if you have a whole lifetime full of it wasn't my fault versus the, yeah, I probably should have tried. I should have studied better. And then if I even want to get deeper into this, uh, we talk about this often of what do we do to get rid of our discomfort? So if I say, okay, but I get it now, next time I'm going to study, I'm going to start preparing a lot sooner. I feel better. 
And then my, you know, if you were playing the role of your mother, then you would go, okay, cool. That makes me feel better <laughs> and everybody feels better. But then the next day, well, I don't need to study because I feel so good. So, and then you just repeat the pattern Start over the and cycle. over. cycle. Yeah. So that's fun. <laughs> okay. I was so, like, so do we study earlier? Do we not? <laughs> no, I mean, I can tell you right now and then we'll go like, oh, see, that works like that. Yeah. So it feels good well, for it. So interesting. This probably correlates our text this morning, right? Me and you, Tony, what we were texting about. Yeah. We were texting about when to record. And then I, you and I yeah, often yeah. end up texting yeah. on Sundays, especially because I think you don't have clients as much. And anyway, it's just more of a chill day for both of I'm us. I'm in Sunday school. So then it's like, that's what you do <laughs> during that time. Well, and so then I hear about what's going on in your Sunday school, which is always a good time. I get to hear what you're thinking. And then, and it's always in all caps, which I also like. And then, I'm it loudly. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're sitting there so calmly in Sunday school but via text. You're like, guess what? <laughs> okay. But- well, I, I got to tell you, because Wendy will listen to these. And that's because those days she's teaching a class. So I know I can't interrupt her. Because on other days I'm like, can you right. believe this? Um, yes. and, that, and I want to do that. So that's very funny. I just, But I, it's okay. Like, I just have to know that during that hour, if I text you, if I want some good entertainment, I'll be like, what's going on, Tony? Totally. What's going on yeah. in Sunday school? And if oh, you're yeah. not in Sunday school, I'll be like, why aren't you in Sunday school? Okay. <laughs> All of that is to say, today as we're texting, I told you, and I was like, guess what? I Because I volunteer every few Sundays to teach this group of adult women, right, in the congregation. Yeah. And the topics are varying, but as Christians, it's always usually centered around something with Jesus. Read this. Anyways, and I, are you looking at the text right now? Yep. You can just read it out loud. What did I say yeah. to you? I just remembered about five minutes ago that I'm teaching Relief Site today. Haha, <laughs> this is where ADHD power really shows up. It's going to be great. Church is in 10 minutes. Stop. <laughs> and have you ever would, done that? Oh, no, because I would drop dead if I was in that situation. Okay, that's like, funny. I when would Julie, not be able I was to do like, that. And meanwhile, by the way, I was handling an extended family um, interesting situation because I felt bad that I wasn't there to go, oh, you know you've got this then because you knew you did, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. kind of. I'm freaking I out. Just that. Thinking about Are you? That. Yeah. The fact that I you have it. That, I can't. I can't even well, say when I say that. I've got this, I don't mean that in a prideful way. I mean right. in a, I'm not freaking out about it. I might, I might like, even perf it. Julie and I have talked about before, but this is what we do. Nope, I'd be it, freaking it just out. Is and it, but the thing is, because I don't freak out about it, it's kind of a choice. Because there, there's, in the past, when I haven't had as much history behind me to show that I can do okay last yeah. minute, I would choose to freak out. And guess what that does? Oh, it, it makes, just makes it, it so it makes bad, so much worse, right? But to just be like, oh to yeah, go, I'm gonna cram right? it real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to cram it real quick. I like lower the stakes of like, oh, we're good. I'm just here to help with the conversation. It's going to be great. And it was literally, I think, the best lesson I've ever given as a volunteer in church. Wow. Seriously. Okay. And like, I can give credit to people in the audience, but I also think there's something about like, it just helps you focus on what really matters here, simplify. And then it was like, all of a sudden I was open to like stories that came to mind and questions to ask. Mm-hmm. Like I was more present somehow because- I simplified it really quick because I had to. So yeah. anyways, I, but that was an interesting moment, right? Right there, we can compare and contrast anxiety I, is, versus ADHD yeah. that totally happened to today. Because Matt yeah. was like, yeah. I would drop dead and die. And I was like, that was kind of cool. That turned out amazing, you know? And yeah. I wasn't freaked out. I really wasn't. Okay, let me tell you, like, we were joking while you were saying that. I don't know if you heard, but I said it might even cause one to poop themselves. And we were joking about that. But, like, literally, if you look at what the fight or flight response does, it says let's empty Straight our stomach contents and our bowels yeah. because we are about to have to either run or we don't want to poop ourselves while we're yeah. It's fighting. like a scientific <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. We joke about this <laughs> all the time. Not okay. Yeah. yeah. Where with me, it's like, oh, no, everything, like, says – we're, Buckle up, boys! Okay. Like we're not for real. I remember one time I was jogging down. I was training for this the this hundred mile race, Western States. I'm and I'm running four in the morning. This two mile hill, and I think I probably need to pull over into a pit stop. I might be editing this story out, but then um and then I like pull over, and then I swear I hear a bear, right? And and because there were bears in the area quite a bit, and I made it the next mile and a half at world record pace. And I did not have to go to the bathroom again for about another six seven hours, you know. And I feel like that's one where. ADHD hyper-focused, then it's go time where anxiety would have been, oh, I just pooped myself and I have to still run away from the yeah. bear, which is probably going to make him I can attest to you, that. Right? <laughs> that would have happened. Yeah. So, Julie, I mean, Julie's like, shut there's up. A, there's your anxiety versus ADHD right there. I love it. I love <laughs> that story. Do you know? I love it. I don't. I hate it. I 
Oh, I we think we talked about this, though. So I'm not a potty yeah, humor like, person. Well, we doesn't humor. like potty humor, so she's dying right I now. No, it's okay. No, I'm not dying because I'm friends with all sorts of people <laughs> with yeah. all sorts of maturity. Like I just feel like <clears throat> I just like I live with a seven and eight year old. Okay, yeah. and uh-huh. it's so funny, and so I just it's okay. I still love people that are immature about that. It's okay. Just but one day, <laughs> one day. When you get to my level, you might come up with more sophisticated jokes. Probably that's is. all. Okay, some more, much more smart things. Maybe one day. <laughs> okay, so let me let me tell you then. I also so jotted down some notes. That, so I want to share the similarities between ADHD and anxiety because I really like where the conversation is going here. So difficulty focusing, and I think that's one of the main components where people see the similarity. So both ADHD and anxiety make it hard to concentrate, but again, in ADHD, it's often because of distractibility or, or hyperactivity. Where in anxiety, it's more about worry and fear and that that can take over. I think it's the overthinking. Like it's just, you're overthinking everything. So there's so many thoughts in your head. Yeah. And I like the theme where, I mean, honestly, I know I'm kind of spitballing this, but in that world of emotional immaturity and the need for validation is that I, and Julie and I have talked a lot about rejection sensitivity in ADHD, which I think is so powerful that then if you also combine that, so then I don't want rejection and I want validation. So a lot of that overthinking for the ADHD brain is still going to come from this place of, hey, I, is this the right thing? Or I don't want to make anybody upset. And where with anxiety, I know there can also be some, I don't want to upset anybody, but yeah. it's because I'm doing it wrong. Or maybe yeah. it's not even as much from validation. Some. I think, yeah, I can see that. That's the overthinking piece is because you said, because I'm always overthinking. I'm like, see, and that's where it does line up for me where I'm like, oh, overthinking is me to a T. My sister that passed away, Amy, she left me one of her shirts and it says, hang on, I got to overthink about it. Oh, right? And like as so a good. joke, right? Yeah. She gave it, she bought it because it was her, but she was like, you should, you now get to have the shirt. <laughs> Thank you. That's really good. Thank you. You know, some yeah. people leave like really meaningful things, but that was what, <laughs> no, it was great. I love it. But Oh, yeah, I overthink things. Well, okay. So, me, on the similarities, though, that's where then right. ADHD being a neurodevelopmental disorder, which affects attention, activity levels, and self-control, and then anxiety being more about excessive worry and fear, often in response to those specific situations. So I think you can see where there is that overlap. And and, and we sent a – we can maybe put this up somewhere in the – I was going to say, I almost want it – because this was helpful for me, the graphic you sent me of the Venn yeah. diagram. I right. almost want us to like go through and read what if Mackie as anxiety read the list of the anxiety and then I li- read the list of ADHD or something. Yeah, yeah. And then why don't I, as Tony, go turn the air conditioner down? Are you hot? <laughs> it's kind of warm. It's super warm. Okay. All right. So you okay, guys start so, going there. Okay. okay. So you, Mackie, will you just read uh-huh. the list of the symptoms of anxiety? Yes. So we have excessive and uncontrollable worry, um, experiences anxiety over a variety of things, worry disproportionate to the actual risk or stressor, and causes significant distress and interferes with school, work, or home life. Awesome. Okay. And then on the, so if you can picture listeners, like a Venn diagram, so that's on the side of anxiety that isn't Mm -hmm. in the middle overlap part. Okay. Just the anxiety stuff. Just the anxiety stuff. So then just the ADHD stuff, and then we'll talk about in the middle where there's just the overlap. Just ADHD, it says, craves novelty and new experiences, may experience anxiety associated with ADHD struggles, difficulty regulating attention and focus, and hyperactivity impulsivity. Okay, so those are so, but then the overlap, Tony, you want to read the overlap? You like how I just took charge of this? You I know it's good. Overlap <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Sleep issues, which I really do struggle with sleep. Um, do you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wake up every hour. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then lower GABA levels. And this one we had to go to the internet because this was really fascinating, actually. GABA is a natural chemical produced by the brain. It is a valuable anti-anxiety neurotransmitter. So when we experience stress, your adrenal glands are triggered to produce hormones like cortisol that trigger um, the fight or flight response and speed up your heart rate and give you adrenaline. GABA counteracts these natural stimulants by relaxing the brain. And so there are GABA supplements that people can take, and I'm not um, pretending to be a doctor, but GABA, I know, is something that maybe you can ask your doctor about because that, and it's interesting when we talk about, I don't know if we've ever talked on this podcast about EMDR, which is a type of therapy for trauma. Yeah, I've done it, yeah. Okay, right. And EMDR is the most fascinating thing from a scientific standpoint. It's no eye movement, desensitization, and realignment, I think, is the EMDR part. And when you're up and walking forward as a kid, you're scanning the 
scenery for safety, left, right, left, right, your eye movement, see if I'm safe. And then there was, uh, I think her name was Francine Shapiro, which had a hypothesis. I don't remember when it was a while ago, that that if your eyes are constantly moving back and forth, that you must, the brain must then assume that you are safe. And so then they, they were able to do some cool tests that then said that, okay, what is it about that? That then when you're walking back and forth, and your the left right movement of the eyes suppresses the as I understand it things like cortisol. So I wonder if that is and this is me making this up, but it I wonder if it is something like it increases GABA or some the left right because the whole concept of EMDR is that you're starting to process scary things. While I mean I have some stuff here to work with it they, these little things that pulsate left right in your hands mm-hmm. or people yep. do like the left right movement with your hand the therapist can. But it's really about the eye movement and then that eye movement signals safety to the brain. And then the brain says, we're okay as we talk about scary mm-hmm. things and they aren't as scary. Oh, I mean, I just wonder about that neurotransmitter GABA because that's pretty powerful, really, if it is. Anyway, so sleep issues, low GABA levels, which would then mean that if you have ADHD or anxiety, that you're not able to calm the brain. Uh, tires easily or fatigue. I, I don't know if I have that one. I don't know. Do we go through these like anybody else? Low, uh, oh. tires easily, fatigue. You? I do feel that fatigue of overwhelm. If, but if I'm in the right kind of difficult and hyper focused, yeah. no. But just like day to day, I feel tired with all my thoughts. And once again, but if I I have my Adderall in me, I was about to no. say the medication. No. Yeah, yeah, that is kind of a trip. And then I know yeah. we've I've joked before, not that I would ever do it, of course, but I've joked about, oh, do you want a Ritalin? You've said, oh, my heart will explode. <laughs> like I, I would actually drop dead. Yeah. yeah. So I do not advocate for that. It is always a joke. <laughs> Uh, difficulty with concentration for both. And I think we've kind of covered why with that one. Um, working memory impacted. And this one's pretty interesting because if, if you look at like the world of complex post-traumatic stress disorder or CPTSD, because I work on that a lot with people that are in emotionally abusive or narcissistic relationships, that there's a belief that if somebody is in this fight or flight response often, that then um, it affects the hippocampus, which is your short-term memory, these little seahorse sized things on each hemisphere of the brain. And then the belief is that if you can't store things in your hippocampus, then it'll never be moved into long-term memory. And so if you're continually acting out of a place of fight or flight, then it impacts your memory because you're not, you're, if you're constantly, if all the blood flow is going to the area of the brain to keep yourself in this active fight or flight response, then your, your hippocampus says we're no longer needed here. And then you're, you aren't having the normal experience of putting things into your short-term memory, which then get into your long-term memory. But I am not a neurologist, but that's my understanding of it. Well, and what's interesting with that is I'm thinking a lot of times when you're in the fight or flight experience in an abusive relationship, you're Mm -hmm. also having another person saying, tweaking your perception sometimes saying, no, that didn't happen. No, I didn't say that. And already your short term memory is already a struggle. You combine that and it's like, it's just chaos. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's going to be tricky. I can see how that could really mess with the mind, you know? Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because that is when I'm on, when I'm only in the waking up the narcissism mode, then I talk about that when somebody is continually being gaslit, the brain says there's right. no need for short term memory because I'm going to be told it's wrong anyway. But then when it keeps you in that fight or flight response, then it literally like is not getting the blood flow it needs. And that's what Just keeps in, people feeling crazy. in relationships with nice, stable people. <laughs> that's a good idea. I mean, that's what I'm taking from that. Yeah. I'm a pro- I, I am for that. Support yeah. that. <laughs> uh, the intrusive thoughts are in this middle of between ADHD Ooh. and anxiety. Mm-hmm. I think we're all like nodding uh-huh. tracks. <laughs> Those are fun. Yeah. So fun. And that's where I say, man, just embrace the world of acceptance and commitment therapy where those are thoughts. Those are happening. Yes. yes. They just are. They, they just are. are. That is it. And why I hate the whole, even though there's truth to it, I hate the whole, this haunted me forever. Thoughts turn into emotions and emotions to behaviors. Yes. Or thoughts turn into actions or whatever. I hated that because I was like, well, I'm insane. <laughs> oh, that one is that I feel like that is my mission as a therapist, because that, again, bless its heart. And there and we were even talking, I think, over the weekend or this last week of some areas where uh, cognitive behavioral therapy worked. Do you remember what the examples were? Because, I mean, I was a CBT therapist forever and CBT is thoughts lead to emotions, emotions lead to behaviors. So if your thoughts are negative, automatically negative, uh, stinking thinking, then you just Mm -hmm. need to change them. What's another Mm -hmm. thing that could be happening? And then that gives you a little dopamine bump in the moment and you think, oh, okay. Or this person, maybe uh, they forgot to call me back. But then when you leave the therapist office, then you're sitting at home and it's hour 10 of the person not calling and you go, maybe they just forgot or they hate me and I'm a horrible person. Your thoughts go toward that. So instead of like thoughts lead to emotions, emotions to behaviors, thoughts are thoughts and Mm -hmm. those are things. And then Mm -hmm. I don't have to take action on all of my thoughts. Those don't define me. 
And then I do this hilarious thing where I'll do it right now for Mackie. My next trick, I'm going to tell him I thought my brain is going to tell me to raise both of my arms above my head. Thank you very much. See, you don't even have to do what your thoughts tell you because I didn't raise either cool. hand. That was really powerful. Thank that you. Was really good. <laughs> um, okay, then SNS, sympathetic nervous system, dominant, fight or flight. There's your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system and the SNS dominant. So it keeps you in that fight or flight mode, which is mm -hmm. funny because they both, ADHD and anxiety, higher rates of GI issues. And now let's talk about poop and pee again for Julie. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> but so it's many, science. That's right. So many people, though, that experience the complex <laughs> post-traumatic stress disorder or ADHD or uh, severe anxiety have GI issues, irritable bowel syndrome. straight to the tummy. Or, yeah, especially. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's yeah the, like my anxiety is in my tummy. Yeah. I've always had mm. fun stomach issues my entire yeah. life, which is fun. Yeah. Really? Okay, yeah. I haven't. Oh, really have. Oh, what's that like? I <laughs> It's wonderful. <laughs> no, I've had times when I am specifically very anxious about something when I have noticed it affect me. But no, like when I've been when I'm like in a really bad place, which hasn't happened in quite a while. Yes, I've had that affect me. But no, like in general, no, not at all. Interesting. That is fascinating. So, uh, Let's leave it at there. <laughs> Don't uh, say another word or ask I'm any not, questions. Nothing about adult diapers, nothing about how many- I'm Moving right along. Uh, restlessness for both ADHD and anxiety. So I think we covered that a little bit. I'm not as familiar with this one, muscle tension. Yeah, I get Do this you? one. Okay. Because if I'm really anxious, I'm, uh, I, you like just freeze, you know, you're, you're like yeah, holding, yeah. Okay. holding tension places. Yeah. And then, I mean, I think that's yeah, what we're no, talking about, but that. yeah. Yeah. Julie, any of that one for you? All I know is every time I go to a chiropractor or a masseuse, they're always like amazed okay. at how incredibly tight everything always yeah. is. So maybe that's yeah. a thing. They're okay, like, whoa, yeah. whoa, like you, you little sister, like they like touch my neck or my back and they're like, it is so insanely tight. I'm like, I do get that a lot. So yeah. I don't know if that's a thing, but yeah, oh, that's I the feedback I always get. Is it's always, yeah. I've always have knots all through my back and stuff. Like Makes it's sense. always, it's never relaxed. Yeah. Okay. No. And I feel like this is one of those where in my more emotionally immature days, I would make sure and edit that part out where I asked the question. Cause I'd be like, this is what it is. Cause <laughs> that makes so much sense. Now that's one of those where personally I haven't had that experience. Yes. I will think about adult diapers and possibly be worried about where the next bathroom is, but then I don't have that muscle tension. That was for you, Julie. Um, yeah. And then the Julie's other one, at it. <laughs> the other one is, oh, this one might fit in perfectly right now. Irritability. <laughs> I just pictured on, wait, what's that show? What's the show? Wait for it. With all the emotions. Oh, Inside Out. Inside Out. Yeah. I just pictured the little angry guy and he's like, I can't take it anymore. And he just <laughs> blows up. So that's what I was, I wish I had one of those things that could pop up like your thumbs up and balloons that <laughs> okay, just like yeah. fire. And yeah. anyways. And true, true story in the bloopers of that, uh, he had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it right now. Okay, yeah. irritability. Okay, so the I see that more as, I see that and I think of when I'm overstimulated. Mm. Yeah. Is more where my irritability comes in is overstimulus, overwhelm, fatigue, and overstimulus of, all, of so many things. And once again, when I am up on my dose of medicine, just everything's easier. Every yeah. single one of these things is easier. So, I can see that. And what's interesting to me as we're talking about the difference between ADHD and anxiety is I take medicine for anxiety. I always have. Okay. I say I always have, sorry, in the last decade or whatever when I started treating it. And now that I'm taking medicine for ADHD, it's a conversation I'm constantly having with my doctor is, do we try to get off the other medicine and just tar target the ADHD? Because like you said earlier on, it's like, I don't want to layer medicines oh, yeah. and not know what's yeah. what, but I'm also kind of, if I'm being honest and vulnerable, I'm scared to get off the one medicine. Uh, I'm just scared because it, it was, it's been so helpful to me. So yeah, I'll keep you up to date on that. If no, you that, that, I appreciate you sharing that. But I really yeah. want it just because I'm like, if it was just the root is ADHD and I don't need the other, like, why not? Yeah. But I'm someone that has no problem taking meds. It's just like all medicine is something unfamiliar to the body. So if you don't need it, why, why take it, right? Yes. And if one does and? though, then man, what a joy, what a pleasure. What so a, worth what it. Miracle, oh, right? so grateful. 100%. And it has been such a great thing for me that I'm nervous to get off it because it's one that, you know, takes two to four weeks to 
yeah. to notice. So it's it's kind of an ordeal getting on and off. I will. And I think we've said this earlier, uh, but I do run into a lot of times and I did the same thing where there there is that fear of taking medication and then the worry, especially of what if I end up having to take this for a long time. And I'm with you. There's that part of me that still feels like, oh, that, but I got to get off of it, right? But then if, then I realize that a lot of times I feel like that is part of the, yeah, but the, yeah, but I don't have to take it the rest of my life says me that hadn't taken it yet. But then when I start taking it and it's miraculous, then I don't ever think about, well, I need to get off of it. Mm-hmm. If I start, I don't know, getting more of this sleep I've heard of and things <laughs> like that. And if all of a sudden, oh, I don't need it as much. I, I would like to tell myself that, that I feel pretty confident that then I don't just have to have it because I don't you know take it on weekends unless we're going to a boring movie things like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But then I do feel like, uh, oh, it's game changer. So that's the part again, where I feel like I'm not worried about that anymore, where I used to find all kinds mm-hmm. of reasons. Yeah. And you don't know until you do it. Like I was yeah. just saying this actually in my lesson today at church, I was saying how we're, what's interesting is it was called Jesus Christ is the focus or Jesus Christ is our focus. And so I was thinking so much about focus and, and oh, yeah. I was thinking about Adderall and how much it's helped me focus. <laughs> and I was just thinking about, I was saying how, and I brought it in with ADHD where I was like, before I took it, I didn't even understand. I was like, how can it help me with focus? Like it doesn't even compute. And then you notice the change. You're like, oh, that's how. And it does make, it is so much like putting on glasses when you yes. didn't realize you were a little bit nearsighted. It's like, it doesn't, cause you hear people talk about, well, I don't want it to change who I am, who I naturally am, all the things and you're like, oh, you've never tried it and had it work. Cause it doesn't do that at all. Exactly. It just yeah. clarifies your vision. So you can see that you're getting distracted. Yeah. You can notice that you like, anyways, pretty cool. No, that's good. Cause, cause I think amazing. we talked too. Cause you still have to have things to do. Cause I, I can be on my medication and then still do things that are not productive really well and enjoy them yeah. very much. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but you're like aware of it. Like aware. taking yeah. Adderall, I feel like I still have these symptoms. It's just, I sure. can see them for what they are. If that makes Absolutely. sense. I Sometimes so I still important. choose to yeah. do it. But whereas when I'm not taking the meds as much, I'm, I'm feeling a lot more stress about it because yeah. I, cause I'm more like unaware of how it's all fitting together, I guess. And I will, again, not a doctor. I don't want people to think all we're doing is saying, you must take medication, you must take it, you must take it. But I also, I have had clients before that I think probably are more on the side of anxiety that have gone and gotten ADHD medications and it has made them feel more anxious. And and that's the one where personally, and again, this is all just anecdotal, but where then I feel like, oh, I've never felt anxious on it. So then that's where in my mind, I think, oh, that that's probably more anxiety and so I will recommend that the person express that to their, their doctor, because that's, that's where I wonder about w- when I see the big difference in the two. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Because if anything, Adderall almost calms me in a which way. Is so wild, which that's what, yeah, that's what we all which say. Which would that, probably send Mackie through the roof, right? Yeah, it would that, not right? be a good thing for me. Because you don't all. even do energy drinks or I can't do like caffeine that. even, yeah. yeah. Caffeine so. is like, uh, it's, uh, it's adorable. And to here me. I am like drinking my Diet Coke while, you right, know, and like, taking, yeah. yeah. One yeah. sip, I'd be a goner. Yeah, so. it's kind of funny. So I think that's yeah. not funny. It's wonderful. <laughs> Mackie knows. Mackie knows because when I go to do, get my hair done, I'm always, I like go straight to the fridge. I'm like, okay, time to, <laughs> Diet <laughs> Coke. Time, time to juice up. We're going to talk about stuff. Let's do it. I'm going to focus. Yeah. Is that what you're looking yeah. at getting the IV drip? Is that what you're looking at doing? We're going on a Diet Coke IV drip. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> just hook it in me when you're do when you're yeah. working on my hair. Yeah, we're working on I'm that. Like, <laughs> now I'm good. <laughs> oh, okay. I think that 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 is uh, everything, and we went longer, but we can blame it on Mackie, right? Sure, because she's never here. Sure. Yeah. We, we never go long when she's nope. not here. Yeah. So it must be me. No, okay, so the okay, so let me. I'll just do this real quick. So the similarities. Okay, we covered the. Difficulty focusing, restlessness. People with either either condition can feel restless or uneasy. For ADHD, it's a physical restlessness, like always needing to move. And anxiety, it's more about a feeling mentally on the edge. And then similarities, impulsivity. Both ADHD and anxiety can lead to impulsive decisions, although the reasons differ. In ADHD, it's often due to lack of impulse control, while in anxiety, it can be a way to quickly escape uncomfortable feelings and emotions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, and then uh, differences. So we've got ADHD. I think I already covered this neurodevelopmental disorder. Um, yes. Anxiety, more of excessive worry and fear. And then consistency of symptoms. ADHD symptoms are generally consistent and ongoing and anxiety, however, can fluctuate and are tied to specific stressors or triggers. I kind of joked about that while you've been home that you've been doing pretty, 
like things have been pretty good. Then okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> I Knock freaked out too yeah. much. <laughs> and uh, I can't. Yeah. And the ADHD is, it's always there. Yeah. What a joy. What a yeah. joy. And then hyperfocus versus avoidance in the differences in ADHD individuals might experience hyperfocus where they become deeply engrossed in a task. In contrast, anxiety can lead to avoidance of tasks due to fear or worry. Yeah. So big takeaways. Here we go. ADHD is about challenges with attention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity that are consistent over time. And I think that consistency, again, regardless of how amazing the situation is, they're there. And then anxiety can involve excessive worry and fear, often fluctuating between situations or stressors. And while there are overlaps like difficulty focusing and restlessness um, and sometimes irritable bowels, the root causes and patterns differ. Solid. Solid. (laughs) Julie, back to you. All right. Well, this has been really helpful for me. I think this can be helpful for a lot of people. If anyone like wants anything clarified, because we can goof off a lot too. And I think we're, we kind of know where we're at ish, like where our paths are going. But um, if it's a little too scattered amidst the genius that we try to bring, send us feedback. Even if it's, Hey, this is too, I'm having a hard time following this or whatever. Like, please, we want to know, we want this to be a helpful thing. I know I learned a ton today. And if anything, it actually made me feel more sure of my diagnosis, talking with Mackie and comparing and seeing where there is overlap and why I was misdiagnosed for so long and seeing that, yeah, Mackie doesn't have ADHD. Not everybody does have it. Not there are, anyways, it's just so good. The more, I love the idea that the more we know, just we're better off. What does Maya Angela always say? She says, when you know better, you can do better, mm. right? And if yeah. you don't know better, if you don't have the knowledge, then you can't act and be proactive. So thank you for this and for Mackie for being in California for Thanksgiving so that we could <laughs> all do this together. And if we do it again, if we want another uh, if we talk, want another voice of anxiety again, Ma- where Mackie lives is actually very close to me. So you can come I know, sit right? on a chair at my house. I know you still need to come because my kids need to meet you and all the things. <laughs> right. um, and I It'll feel happen. like I could do a, I could do a love ADHD note to anxiety. Oh, do, do it. Yeah. Let's hear it. Dear anxiety, you are adorable. Get over here. I'll give you one of these, like a little <laughs> noogie on your head. And I look at you getting all uh, anxious and you think you have bowel problems. You know, okay. I need some validation here. Um, but, uh, yeah, really, that's all I had. Planned, but that was <laughs> just kind of <laughs> okay. Wait, are we doing another one for real? Or are we gonna be? Are we just gonna end there? I got nothing. Okay, I can do one. <laughs> okay, I can do one. Okay, Mackie, unless you have something genius. No, go ahead. Okay, <clears throat> I appreciate you all taking this very seriously. Okay. <laughs> Rejection, dear, dear Michael. I know a lot of times people thought you were just anxious, just worry too much. You struggle with anxiety and you've never really been able to make sense of it because there's more to it than that. And I want you to know that I, your friend ADHD, am also an option. And as my dear friend, Tony Overbay, who has studied me at length, says, what a joy that you are figuring out that you are getting more and more focused in, pun intended, on what really is going on in your brain and how it works. And it's me. It's ADHD. And we're going to have a kicking fun time together as we really focus in on what it means to have ADHD and the way that you can utilize the hyperactivity and the impulsivity and all the happy things that come with it. So I'm super excited for you. And I love you so much. Love ADHD. P.S. Mikey, I always carry a change of clothes. It's true. Julie's going to fire you. It's I don't true, think though. I can fire him. <laughs> okay. No. Not okay, for Julie. me, though. Okay? I'm not just saying that. I really, I'm not just yeah. saying it. Proper. Oh, no. I know you're not. Oh, I could tell stories and stories and stories. But, but I do know someone close to me that, yes, big time. GI mm-hmm. issues like big time interrupts life a lot. Yeah, no, for real, there are people that are going to listen to this, and the fact that that acceptance of then it takes away the oh, what's wrong with me? It's just a thing. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. Sometimes you're driving around the mall like a crazy <laughs> man. You learn all the back catacombs theoretically. Theoretically. Find a bathroom in time. You might be 54 and bald. I was, I was in my 40s. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> all right, Julie, thanks so much. You're welcome. Fun to have you guys. Yay, fun to be here. Talk to you later.